So we're back with um, the when I did the turbulence and the drag. Um, I just thought I'd show this for rendering. Um, so I've simulated it out and did 100 frames. Anything I changed from the other video was I just cranked it up to 10,000. So we've got 10,000 particles coming out of that. Um, so I want to do a sign of material. So let's do a sign material and plug in the geometry there, plug in that there. And we want to make a AI standard surface like that. And I'm going to make a user data color to grab hold of that color that we've been making. So user data color. And as you remember, our color node is called color. Now, it doesn't have to be called this. You could have multiple set color properties and call them different things. Um, it needs to be called color if you want to see it in the viewport, though. If you call it something else, the viewport doesn't see it. Um, right. So let me go back to wherever we were. So I'm just going to copy that into there. And I'm just going to put this into the emission color. So I don't need any lights. Um, and then I'm just going to turn my emission up to one. All right, um, and get rid of the specular. Don't need any specular. So, oops, got to drag that in. So you lose it in the viewport once you assign this. Um, there is a new node in the slate event called terminals, uh, terminal, which you can use. Um, and you get these, it's a basically an output node like this one, but it's got three different types of outputs. You've got the final, which is the one that we rendered, proxy is what you'll see in the viewport, and diagnostic, if you've got some diagnostic things like scopes and stuff like that. Um, we've not really looked at those yet, but we should do. Um, so I can plug that one into my final and delete that now, I don't need it. So you're not going to see anything, but then I can plug that one, ignore sub, ignore that one into the proxy, and we'll get our color back in the viewport so you can see it. But it won't render, it will render this one. And you can see in here, if you go on that, if you click on the attribute editor, we have these thing called terminals and it shows you what renders. So don't see the file in the viewport, it renders, see the proxy and diagnostic and all this sort of stuff there. So you can turn these on and off. If you wanted the proxy to render, you can just turn it on. Right. So let's open up our, our render view. I think it's already open. Yep. And let's make this square, just it's a bit more squarey, isn't it? There we go. And then hit render. Oh, there we go, there we have it. So, um, as you can see, renders really quickly, which is good. Um, I might need to crank up some of my settings. Not in that one, let's close that now. Um, so let's go to here. Well, first of all, I don't need any of these. I'm not doing any subsurface. I'm not doing any transmission. Um, Specular's gone, so it's just these. I'm just gonna crank this up to six. Um, take a bit longer now. But as you can see, it's still very quick. Right. Um, and one of the things you want to do for particles if they're moving around is you do want a bit of motion blur. So I'm going to turn on motion blur. I'm just going to recalculate that. Well, might the last frame. Let's go to what frame here. Mm. 
so we're getting motion blur on there now which is nice um, you can also if you want to you can crank the length up to one so it's a full just add more sort of length to them give them a bit more oomph as you can see um, so that looks all very nice uh, let me go to my shader so now I've, I think I've realized you can go if you select the Bifrost graph go to the attribute editor now shows you the material that's applied. Um, so we could bring that down a bit if I wanted to. Um, I might leave that one. One of the things that you sort of need to sort of to get this sort of what I've got going on in the other one, where is it? You know, this, where they're quite sort of tenderly and smooth, they need to be very small the particles. Um, and you have to emit quite a lot of them. I, can't remember what this was, but it was easily above 12 million. Um, might even be more near 30. Um, so, if you've rendered them out, if you simulate them out and they're a bit big, well, this is one of the cool things of about the graph is that you can um, alter them afterwards after the caching. So let's have a look here. Let's get rid of some of this. Let's just do that. So, um, what I want to do is, I want to change the size of these. I want to make them all a bit smaller. So, what I can do, but I've cached it out, so I can't, I don't want to resim it. So, if I go to tab, I want to get hold of the, the point size. So, I need to get hold of that property. So, get geo property is the node I need. Um, let me do that there. Yeah, so I can do this after this. Um, I need to say what the property is, point size. Um, and I need to say it's a array of floats. There we go. Uh, warning, it's still not working, is it? Now, I think this might be one of the problems you get from doing stuff after a cache is that when, when you've cached something it's no longer just the information of the particle system or whatever the geometry is it has other information in there such as rendering stuff um, and things like that so inside of here there is loads of information I only want to access the bit that is about the particles at the moment when I do that it's not letting me do that because um, there's more than one particle in here. So you can tell when a, um, a sort of transfer of data has more than one element to it. If you right click it and go add a watch point, it won't show you anything. It'll just say size one. It means that there's an array of arrays of information. So there's basically two blocks of information in there. We want to access the first one, which is where the particle stuff is kept. So we can just do this, which is, let's get rid of that. We go tab, we want first in array. So it's just going to take the first element of that array, and that's what we want there. So when we connect that, oops, that now doesn't error because it's getting the right information in there. So that's point size. And what I want to do is I just want to multiply by a point number. So let's just get the data, add a value node, and I'm just going to say 0.5. That will make it half as small. And then I just want to do... So now that I've got the data, I've changed it by multiplying it by 0.5 to make it half the size. I now need to replace it back into the particle system. So I need a set geo property. And I'm going to call that what it is, which is point size. Like so. 
sorry, if you hit return, it goes inside it. Um, and just going to plug that into the data. So that's the point size data that's been changed. And I need to tell the set geopropty what I'm setting this property onto, which is the particle system. So I can just drag that back in there. Like so. Um, and then I can just farm that into the assigned material. And we won't see anything because my assigned material is going only into the render. So if I just do that as well. Oops, sorry, I've got more than one there now, so I need to get rid of that one. And you can see they all got smaller. And you could, now you've got access to that, you could make them all bigger. Or make them even smaller. Like that. So, I'm going to hit render on that now. What do we get? As you can see, now that they're smaller, they're a little bit nicer looking, they're a bit more misty. Um, and maybe they're too small, so I could just go back here, maybe say 0.35. And obviously this would need a lot more particles to get sort of similar to what I had here. No, oh, I think I've closed it. So what's good about this, obviously this after the fact caching that I can now change stuff, is you can do that to the color, um, and other things, what other things can you do? Well, whatever the parameters that are coming out of this, if you wanted to change them. Um, so let's see what they are. So it's gonna re-render that, and just gonna change the graph. So point age, good done point bounciness could have made them more bouncy. I don't think you could do that actually because the sort of positions stuck in them. Uh, basically point size, point age would be I don't think you might be able to multiply the point age, make them a bit long live a bit longer. Um, and definitely you can do the colour as we saw with the velocity. Um, you could do the same for that in here with the um, with the velocity thing actually while we're here just let's just try to no actually what I'll do is I'll stop this so that was uh, let's just render that out one more time there we go renders super quick which is really good um, so that's setting up rendering out and adjusting the size of the particles after caching <laughs>